Aristotle said that the quest of humanity is for happiness, I thought that was a bit simplistic and reasoned that Aristotle was an old man who lived a long time ago and perhaps things had changed. Over time, I've come to realize that Aristotle was right. I mean, whose life quest is to be unhappy? I'm now convinced that the quest for happiness is real enough. The challenge is what we believe will make us happy. It is these beliefs that shape our choices and guide the direction of our life and as a result determine whether we are happy or not. Are the beliefs we hold true is the question. The beliefs we have about ourselves, the beliefs we have about relationships, the beliefs about what our priorities should be. From a lifetime of experience, I have come to understand how critical what we believe, what we choose, and what we do is to determine how happy we are. When I was 19, my mentor, Vivo Segeza, said to me, Larry, you are gifted. Larry, you are powerful. Larry, you are important. And I thought, Vivo, you're delusional. After all, I was a high school dropout. I was working at another dead-end job, just barely clinging to the hope that my dreams could still come true. How was I gifted? I knew I wasn't an athlete. I knew I wasn't a singer or an actor. I sure wasn't one of the smart kids. All of that was clear to me. How was I gifted? And powerful, please. Power people had money, charm, and good looks, or a position. They were powerful because they could get what they wanted. Me, I was living in a single basement room with no money. Life was a struggle for me. I had a power shortage. And how was I important? To whom for what? I thought Vivo was misguided. A short time later, I read a used copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People, dropped by someone in the hallway of the rooming house I lived in. It changed everything. It gave me perspective. My life didn't change overnight, but the direction of my life changed in an instant. I discovered my past didn't need to define my future. I needed to stop being an expert about who I wasn't and what I couldn't do and become an expert about who I was and what I could do. I needed to improve the conversation in my own head. These concepts were all new to me then, fuzzy and tentative. I now know that these ideas were the foundation on which I changed the course of my life. Today, it is crystal clear to me that the most powerful thing you can do to improve your life is to improve the conversation in your own head known as self-talk. To be on your side instead of on your case. So, I've come to the conclusion that I know the truth about you. You are gifted. Your unique set of talents, abilities, interests, passions, and dreams define your promise. You are powerful. Your power is in your choices. Accept and believe in yourself. Focus on your dreams. Take action and persevere. You are important. You can make a difference with your personal mission. And your personal mission is to serve others in a way that is meaningful to you. The problem? Limiting self-talk. The limiting story you tell yourself about yourself. The critics in your head that foster worry, doubt, and fear. The inability to hear your inner guide. The solution? Empowering self-talk. Improve the story you tell yourself about yourself. Silence the critics in your head. Hear and listen to your inner guide. Improve your self-talk and improve your life. Your life will improve based on what you learn, what you choose, and what you do. In the next talk, The Six Tools, we will share with you the learning and support tools and the thought processing tools. Both will help you improve your self-talk.